think anything can prepare you for those culture shock moments that happen when you move to another country. I mean, there's one thing hearing about something, but it's a whole other thing when you're in the actual country, seeing it with your own eyes. These are the things that shocked me when I moved to Australia, and the last one might be a little TMI, so continue if you dare. By the way, I'm refilming the first part of this video, so if you notice things shift, like my nose ring is different later in the video, it's because days have passed because I lost footage, and here we are. First of all, how big kangaroos can get. The first kangaroo I ever saw was in someone's front yard and it was taller than the fence. And this wasn't like a small waist high fence. It was a tall fence and I was shook. And just the way that they can just stare at you so intimidatingly, it's terrifying. I've had maybe two encounters with kangaroos in the last 10 years where I've just been like, get me the hell away from this thing. Other than that, the encounters have been everything I expected and more. And I mean, I still love them. They're so damn cute and just don't mess with them, okay? Next was the toilet flusher. I was so confused when I first used the toilet here and nobody warned me. And I'm not talking about like the water flushing in a different direction. I honestly still haven't paid attention to if that happens. So does it? Let me know in the comments. But I'm talking about the actual button to flush the toilet. There was two options and I was like, oh my God, what do I do? And I was like freaking out. If you don't know, the flushing button in Australia is on the lid of the toilet seat. And in America, it's on the side. It's just like, this is crazy, no one's told me about this. Like, I, I felt like I was going to pick the wrong button and someone was going to come in and yell at me because I broke the toilet or I set off some alarm. I had no idea what these two buttons were, okay? I was just so confused. I was just like, what's gonna happen if I push the wrong side? Like, now I know there is no wrong side, really. It's a full flush and a half flush. But I, but I just really thought someone was gonna come in and yell at me. I was gonna break something, it was gonna start overflowing. I just did not know what to expect. <laughs> And I mean, that might be a little bit over dramatic, but we just have the flusher on the side. Now, when I go back to America, I go to flush it the Aussie way, and I'm like, oh, there's no button there. The toilets feel so different in the US now, and it's just so funny how things have like reverse culture shocked me, which I might do a whole video on that. But now I'm all over it, and the toilet buttons no longer freak me out. <laughs> Then it was my first time ordering a coffee here. And just like not knowing how to phrase it. It can be so overwhelming and intimidating, especially depending on the staff that you get when you're walking into a cafe or a restaurant. Like if they are having a bad day and they're just not feeling very patient or kind, it can just make you feel very uncomfortable in the situation, especially when you're in a new country for the first time, really trying to find your feet and just understand the culture. It really helps when the locals that you encounter with are you know empathetic to that you trying to learn a new culture and way of doing things but that doesn't always happen that's not reality in the US you make your coffee here they make your coffee so they need to know how you like it how you want it in the States they just bring over the pot of coffee you add your cream your sugar you add all the fixings you need to know the lingo because they don't use cream here they use milk and I've worked in coffee shops in the US and in Australia so I obviously had to learn very quickly and adapt to that very quickly and I'm grateful for that because it just allowed me to get over that awkward embarrassing like intimidating phase when it came to this so I very quickly learned what I liked I like an Americano or a long black go figure typical American with a dash of milk but after being here for so long, I've come to love a latte or a cappuccino. I'm pretty flexible in like my coffees these days. But I think that's because when I moved here, I wanted to try different things. I moved here in 2012 and back then, it wasn't as common to have coffee shops that were making lattes and cappuccinos and using like proper barista espresso machines like they do at Starbucks in the US. Now, in 2023, I think it's way more common to have options when it comes to like barista made coffee other than Starbucks. And here, that's just the standard. And Melbourne loves to be known for their coffee snobbery. So when I first moved here and people were like, you never tried a cappuccino? Oh my God. Like all the Aussies loved like like introducing me to the best coffee in Melbourne. The best coffee, Melbourne has the best coffee. And Melbourne does have great coffee, but I've had, I think one of the best coffees I've ever had was in Quebec, Canada. Mmm, mmm, I still dream of that. I, it was just, it was simple, but it was beautiful. But Melbourne does do great coffee, I will say that. But that's not to say that you won't go to places that make really crappy coffee. So, I don't know. That's just my opinion, you might not agree. And me personally, I'm a Dunkin' Donuts girly, but 
I will say that I do go to the Starbucks in Australia when I'm feeling homesick and I just want a taste of home. Okay, using cutlery in Australia was a traumatic experience for me and maybe that's a dramatic statement as well, but uh, we're rolling with it. I think it was so traumatic because I felt so out of place. I felt so embarrassed. I felt so, I don't know what the hell I'm doing and I don't want to ask someone because like I'm an adult and I should know how to use a fork and knife properly, but I didn't even know this was a thing until I moved here that Americans just love using forks for everything. People say that Australians are lazy because they abbreviate everything, like afternoon is Arvo and all the things. If you know, you know. Americans are lazy when it comes to cutlery because we'll just grab a fork for anything. Not anything, like if we're eating a steak, we're gonna use a fork and knife. If we don't have to use a knife, we won't. <laughs> At least that's how I grew up. In my household, we just grabbed a fork, okay? I don't know, let me know. How did you grow up in your household? Was it like a fork? and knife kind of thing. I will say, growing up, our family didn't have like sit down dinners. Then when I moved here, I experienced more family dinners where we sat down and had like a Sunday roast. It was like a Sunday dinner at the Reagans if you watch Blue Blood. That was the first time I really like, the culture shock of how I used cutlery sat in. I was at a family dinner and I was sitting there and I noticed that everyone was using forks and knives, not just to cut meat, just like, just with veggies, just with everything. And I was just like, whoa, whoa. And I, I don't know, it just, you notice it right away because it's so foreign. And I was just like, I felt like I had to do it. I felt like if I, if I don't eat this properly, they're all gonna be like, what a savage. Just eating with my fork, I was just like this caveman sitting at their nice family dinner. And I was like, I can't do this. And so it was like a moment of me sitting there trying to learn like secretively like let me take notes i was just like over there taking mental notes looking how everyone was like uh, and and they're like i would get so nervous inside that i was like using the, the knife upside down like i've never used a knife before like i've used a knife i know how to use a knife but it was just like foreign um and aussies are really big on knowing how to use uh, chopsticks I learned how to use chopsticks once I moved here. I will say like my sister is like an exception to the rule because she she's like a pro with chopsticks. I would always be like, that's so fascinating, that's so wild. And I moved here and it was just like, oh yeah, like we know how to use chopsticks. Of course we know how to use chopsticks. And then I, I experienced going to a restaurant for the first time that didn't serve forks and I was like, I have to learn. I feel like with the coffee and the cutlery, like that whole stuff, I was just thrown into the deep end. Like when I started working in a cafe here, I had to, I had to learn. I had to know the thing. Like I was, I was working. I had to, like I had to communicate with staff. So uh, I, I, there was no option for me to just like stay in my ignorant bliss. <laughs> I just decided fake it till you make it, and I just pretended I knew what I was doing. And there were moments that I definitely looked like I did not know what I was doing. I literally used the knife backwards. Like, it's not like I've never used a knife before, but like the pressure was on and I was putting the pressure on myself. No one else was like, um, Jamie, what are you doing? Do they have it in their left hand or their right hand? Like, like I'm being fully transparent right here, okay? So call me dumb, call me ignorant, call me whatever you want. Like, this is just the truth and my truth. And I know someone else out there can relate, okay? So get over yourself but it's different cultures it's different it, okay there's parts of the world that they don't even use cutlery okay so it's just like if you were sitting there and you're like got your judging hat on like oh my god what a degenerate she didn't even use a knife and fork properly like there's people that don't use them it's just different cultures and that's just what i'm talking about okay it's just different and it, it was a big difference for me you know, I want to travel to other countries where they do use their hand to eat foods. I want to experience that. Um, and, you know, experiencing this little culture shock made me, it opened my eyes more to like, oh, there's so many differences. Like, yes, this is an English speaking country, but there are still so many differences down to like how we eat our food. This one is tampons, okay? I warned you, I warned you, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to eat this ground. I don't want to hear it. I warned you, tampons. First time I went to go get tampons. Culture shock. That That is like, when I think of culture shock, that moment of buying tampons for the first time is probably the highest on the list of culture shock moments. I can deal with using a knife and fork. Like, 
we, we didn't do it often in the States, but we still did it. I can deal with giant kangaroos. I can deal with learning my coffee order, but the tampons, I still, 10 years later, I can't deal with it. I do because I have to. Honestly, I don't really wear tampons much anymore, but not like you asked, but like we said, this is the TMI section, so uh, welcome. But apparently this is common in other countries too, so maybe once again, the US is the weird ones out. Wouldn't be the first time. There's no applicator. No applicator. Like I still, it still bothers me even though I don't really use tampons. It still bothers me. When I have, I'm just like, this is not okay. This can't be like the norm. This can't be how everyone's doing this. It can't, it can't be, it can't be. I refuse to accept this. It's like you're shoving cotton up there with your bare hands, like what? I don't know, the applicator just feels more sanitary. And in my experience, it is more sanitary. And they do have applicators here. There's one brand that is a brand that is well known in the US that you can get the applicators, but it is so overpriced because I'm pretty sure they import it. And so I'm like, I can't justify the like 200% markup on this product when I can just get tampons for $2 here. From what I gathered, a lot of people here view tampons with applicators as like, for young girls who are learning how to deal with their menstruation cycle for the first time. Like it's like a, a training kind of thing. Like tampon in training with the applicator. No, Cause it's easier. Because it's easier. Mm -hmm. That's why, because it's easier. Just like, no, why would anyone prefer this? Like this is what I get for becoming a woman. This is what I get for becoming an adult. I have to use my bare hands. Uh-uh, uh-uh. It is what it is at the end of the day. Like, obviously, like, I have used them. I've gotten used to it. But, like, is it my preference? No, it's not. Now we got menstrual cups that are, like, very big and popular. And I would say it's very similar to using the Australian tampons, the experience there. And I had a great experience using menstrual cups. But, um, yeah. Anyway, I could do a whole other video just on menstrual cycles and my issues with that. Anyway, I'm sure you are ready to be done with that part of the conversation. Let me know, have you ever experienced any culture shock moments in your life? What were they? Please let me know. How embarrassed were you? How cringe was it? Like, let me know all the details because like I just shared it all, okay? I just put it all on the table, so now it's your turn. Did any of these that I listed surprise you? What would you add to this list? I feel like I could do a whole part two to this video because there is way more than just five things. I just wanted to make this quick video. So I hope you enjoyed it. With that, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing, and I hope to see you tuning in to another video soon. Bye!